Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen. This is Hard Rock University. Where the heck is the gold edition? Now, we have a shaft right there. And the vein runs in this general direction, according to the records. And so the presumption was, if you trench across here, you should hit it. Well, so far we've been having trouble with that uh, theory. So what we're going to do, we're going to tie a rope to that excavator as an anchor, flip it over the top there, rappel down into that uh, short shaft, and get a good idea of exactly what's going on underground so that we can figure out, theoretically, where is the surface intercept of the mineralization. Because we could dig quite a bit of it real easy with that excavator if we can find it. So that's what we're trying to do today, is find the surface intercept of the mineralized zone. As you can see, they were definitely following the contract contact between these two types of rock. And they were taking more of the metavolcanics, it looks like, than the serpentine. But there's not any obvious vein here. I'm thinking it's more of a mineralized zone. They were following this line of contact and hitting pockets. And then when they found them, they'd go ahead and open up. That does seem to be what they were interested in, right in there. Or at least that's what they were following. Okay, here we are, lower shaft in the stopes, and this wall here clearly looks serpentine, and this wall here clearly does not. <laughs> I mean, you can see the change in color, texture, and everything. So I would agree that in this spot they were following the contact, and they were not getting a lot of tonnage. Looks like these little gouges is what they're really interested in. And this looks shaky as hell in here in some places. So what I will probably do is take samples of the stuff on the ground, figuring it has sloughed off from the looser material and I won't have to disturb anything to do that. We have some stoles and stuff in here and you can clearly see that they're not in that good a shape. It's wet. Here's a stope where they were going down. And they were after looks, well here is clearly what they were after. This crack going into the serpentine. It looks like, yeah, it is in the serpentine. It's a breccia zone in the serpentine that they were mining. That is not in the metavolcanics. And man, they tunneled along this baby. Yeah! They like this. I can probably get a sample of this safely. There's a tunnel along this right here. And that's in the serpentine. This is not metavolcanics over here. Okay, we have structures in the serpentine, both sides, that they were mining. Okay. And I mean, they were serious about it. So while they were following that contact there, this is a parallel structure here. And I should be able to sample it pretty safely at this point here. Looks good. Ask Norm if he thinks he can haul a bucket up 
Okay. Okay, we have a situation where we want to haul a bucket up, but we don't want it dragging along the side, especially if there's an overhang up there. So we want to be able to pull the bucket from down here as well as up there. Take a loop, put it underneath the handle. Uh, come on, a little more slack, please. Around the bucket. And then pull it tight, and you have a two half hitch on the bucket without having to pull a lot of rope through the knot several times. Now I'll go back here. So I can hold it away from the wall. Ready? Yep. And there we go, got it all the way up without dragging off any wall rock into it. Well, there's the shaft, I agree, 30-35 feet to the top of the muck pile. Off to the left, or to the south, they've stoped it out. Again, no particular vein structure, just a bunch of calcite and the serpentine it looks like. I'll go up there in a minute. The other direction. Same thing, they were clearly stoping this, that's not an access tunnel. That would take rope work to go down, but I don't see any reason it couldn't. They certainly went down. Timber old beat hell here. That's filled in. Let me go up here and take a look at what we got. Okay, we're at the top of the left stope. It's a little sketchy. That I'm guessing is the bottom of that little side tunnel from the other one. And there, again, no big vein that I can see anywhere. Okay, I gotta use two hands. Okay, looking back towards the shaft. You can see the light over there. This is the vein, or actually the mineralized structure here that they were going after. Again, it is right along the contact. There's a lot of talc, a lot of iron. Aside from that, I can't tell. Just looks like iron stained serpentine. And there's the work platform. Okay. This is the structure in the serpentine lower shaft, and I'd call that a quarter to a half ounce to the ton. Now Richard's running samples over the RP4 here to uh, see if there's coarse gold that we're not recovering in a small two pound sample that we're panning. So far we're not seeing a whole lot of that. There was one chunk of gold of significant size and not big. And the RP4, you can see the split we're doing right here, and even then, a significant amount is going into the middlings. I haven't panned the tailings yet, but I need to do that too. This is what we got out of the middlings. Yeah, probably two of our standard cups. So it's running about a tenth of an ounce to the ton in the middlings still. Not a super good recovery. This is more of the cons. Here's the concentrates from the uh, bucket of material just taken off the bottom of the dumps. I mean, of the, the stope there. It's what you're walking across. Definitely got gold in it. 
right where my finger is, there's some gold there. Not much, maybe 5% of the total. So that's not too bad. That's the uh, third product, almost tailings, on the RP4. So this is a very similar rock. It's from a different mine, but very similar situation to what we were looking at. You have the rock along the fracture zone that's been broken up, and then the cracks have been filled with mineralized material. That's what carries the gold primarily. And uh, this uh, has been confirmed. We just got a new report that had been misfiled at Oregon Department of Mines, and it shows that when they sampled the small veins, they got some really high-grade stuff, sometimes in the tens or more of ounces per ton. But when they sampled wide areas, you know, 18 inches, 16 inches, 2 feet wide, they didn't get near those grades. Sometimes they got, you know, 2 or 3 ounces per ton over a 2-foot intercept, but usually it's more half an ounce to the ton or so. So this is more what you would call a stringer vein. Remember I was talking to that a few lessons ago? We have a fracture zone and the cracks are filled, but there's not a real vein involved. It's just a mineralized zone, and the minerals that you're interested in are in the filled cracks. This offers up some interesting possibilities, which I'll get into in another lesson. Okay, so here is our conclusion of the day, testing the various samples. You see, there is some coarser material there. But most of it's fine. And uh, we'll go have some more fun out there probably tomorrow. Happy prospecting. Keep it safe out there.